There's been some incredible news today that scientists have discovered a way to potentially stop estrogen receptor positive breast cancers coming back after 10 to 15 years. It was research led by Professor Luca Magnani, who's the Professor of Epigenetic Plasticity at the Institute of Cancer Research in London. And I had the honour of speaking to him just a few minutes ago, and this is what he said. So I'm thrilled to have with me today Professor Luca Magnani. He's the Professor of Epigenetic Plasticity at the Institute of Cancer Research in London. And he is the man behind the breaking news today that we might have discovered why estrogen receptor positive breast cancer cells start waking up and growing after 10 to 20 years. Can you explain a little bit to us about the study? Yeah, so I kind of want to put forward already, this is a basic research study, right? So this was uh, an in vitro and was around the concept. And what we really wanted to study and discover is the impact of therapy, in this case, aromatase inhibitors, that is something that the vast majority of women will receive after surgery. And if you think about this, therapy is really designed to slow down cell more than to directly kill them. Yeah. And so we were able to show what happens to the cell that acquired this hibernation state, if you will. There's a quite distinct profile under the point of view of epigenetics. These are chemical modification. You can think like of bookmarks that are mm -hmm. put in the genome. And we realized that the, this, you know, you, there's a lot of heterogeneity to start with, but cells that enter the state are all very similar. And they increase the amount of heterochromatin, meaning that they're shutting down quite a lot of their genome. So they're removing a lot of bookmarks. And we realized that if we, that is something we could target. So while they're trying to adapt, they are trying to enter to the state. If we target the enzyme that catalyzed this reaction, they don't really like it and they tend to start to die off. Wow, that's amazing. Because a lot of people don't realize their cancer can come back after 20, 10 to 20 years and it's hard to know what treatments it might come. But um, where do you think the next steps will be? So the next step is, of course, documenting this in vivo, in patient. And that's mm -hmm. a difficult uh, difficult thing to do because uh, you, you are aware that after surgery, you are assuming a patient is tumor free. Yeah. But we know that there must be a proportion of women that have this micro disseminated disease, very small deposit, we don't know where they are. So we are trying to think around how can we focus on this cell? How can we study this cell in patients? And we have a few ideas. We think, you know, bone biopsy, bone marrow biopsy, not something super nice, but I think most likely needed to advance the field. And on the other way, we have done much more in terms of understanding the vulnerabilities of these cells. And we hope this will lead eventually to combination therapy. And the idea would be you get your hormone treatment. And at the very start of that, we also give you something that help or destroy the ability of this cell to adapt. That hopefully will lead to a much better curative rate and hopefully less relapse. It's just incredible. And I, I had a look through the paper. It took me back to my PhD days. And thank you so much for summarizing it so succinctly for us all to read. Um, can you tell us what you'll be working on next? So we're working on a few follow-up. First of all, we're uh, working on G9A and we're trying to see uh, how good of a target it is. So this is bringing us to the next stadium that is modeling these in mouse uh, models and organoids. And of course, the limitation there is that the compounds we've used is not ready for the clinic. This means that we really need to go in a drug discovery, drug improvement, and that will take time. And generally, you know, it's very, very difficult to predict when this will, if this will be successful. Yeah. But on the other hand, we are really also doubling down on this concept of dormancy or therapy induced dormancy, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and we really try to, we think that there are transient vulnerability that these cells have, and they have been underexplored simply because we don't see them. So if we could model these much better, we, we are launching a couple of trials. One is called quintessential, where we are leveraging repeated biopsy. And we hope that this will tell us yeah. if these vulnerabilities are there in women. And this will, of course, open the path to many, many, many more targets and hopefully more therapies. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, Professor Magnani. Very welcome. Thank you very much. So what the researchers did was to look at a group of women whose cancer had come back after 10 years from their diagnosis, and they'd been on anastrozole and letrozole, and they did repeated biopsies. So thank you to all the women involved in the study, just to see what was happening at a genetic level. 
and they saw in a small group of them that a certain protein was being changed, how it was expressed, and the effect of this was that their breast cancer cells stayed dormant, they weren't killed by anastrozole and letrozole, and that's why they suddenly started to wake up and grow many, many years later. They then went back to the lab and they looked at breast cancer cells and they treated those cells with anastrozole and letrozole. And it seemed that in small groups of cells, the hormone blockers were actually making these cells go to sleep and they were switching the cells off so they weren't being killed. This doesn't happen in everybody, so please don't panic. What they then did was block the, an enzyme called G9A, which was triggering this protein change. And by blocking it, they discovered that not only were the breast cancer cells not falling asleep, but it was actually killing cells that were asleep. So the effect of anastrozole and letrozole was much, much higher. And this is really, really exciting for the future. It's still very early days. We are looking at lab studies in cells. We need to move on to animal models before we even start thinking about human studies and potential drug development. But it's really, really interesting and it's given us another area to explore to see why do breast cancer cells stay dormant for such a long time? Is it something in the DNA and the cancer cells are mutating or is it something in our environment that is causing it? But it's a huge step in the future of treatments for ER positive breast cancer.